At the time of his death, Tupac Shakur left behind a highly impressive resume and an immeasurable influence on hip hop culture. It left many fans to wonder what the superstar could have accomplished had his life not been cut short in 1996. The Hit'em Up rapper has sold over 75 million records worldwide. His All Eyes On Me album and Greatest Hits collection are certified diamond, making them two of the highest selling albums of all time. But Tupac also left behind a legacy of legal and financial trouble. At the time of his death, his loved ones and fans were shocked to find out that the beloved rapper owed his record company $4.9 million. Although his music generated over $60 million in the last year of his life, here's why Tupac died broke. Let's take it back to 1995, where Tupac was sentenced up to four and a half years in prison for sexual abuse. After serving nine months while waiting for an appeal, he's released thanks to Marion Suge Knight. The former record executive paid Shakur's $1.4 million bail in exchange for his signature on a contract with his label, Death Row Records. The contract, however, was not your typical recording agreement. Unlike most record deals, which come with pages and pages of legal jargon and integrity, Tubac signed a handwritten three-page contract for $3.5 million. He immediately flew to Los Angeles to begin recording his fourth studio album, All Eyes On Me. With over 25 tracks, the album became hip hop's first ever double LP and went diamond, making it one of the highest selling hip hop albums of all time. But according to Afeni Shakur, Tupac's mother, and her lawyer, Tupac was rarely in the loop regarding his finances. In 1996, when Tupac passed, he died without a will, leading his mother, Afeni Shakur, to file court papers, establishing herself as the administrator of his estate and the sole living heir. Soon after his death, Afeni learned that her son was nearly $5 million in debt to his record label. She began to question the validity of the contract between her son and Death Row Records. The label failed to provide receipts that would allow Tupac's estate to conduct an independent audit. She enlisted the help of her lawyer, Richard Fishbein, to help make sense of Pac's post-mortem financial standing. What he found was that the chart-topping rapper who died at 25 years old had nothing to show for his highly successful career. No mutual funds, no IRA, no real estate, Tupac didn't even own his Woodland Hills, California home. At the time of his death, Tupac had a five-figure life insurance policy to which his sister, Shechua, was the beneficiary. He had two cars and $105,000 in a checking account. Richard Fishbein told the Los Angeles Times in 1996, Tupac was one of the most successful artists in the music business, and yet somehow, on the day he died, he had absolutely nothing to show for it. We believe that Death Row Records withheld royalty payments from Tupac and failed to deliver many of the advances promised under his contract. Death Row denied any mishandling of Pac's finances, citing the millions of dollars in advances he was given that were required to be paid back. Aside from the $2 million towards recording and video costs, which the label had to recoup before Pac's account could turn a profit, sources told the Los Angeles Times that the Death Row signee also charged a slew of lavish bills to the company's tab. Lease payments for three residences, a $300 tab at the Pensacola Hotel, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in invoices for cars, jewelry, and furniture were among debts that Death Row claimed it was owed. According to Variety in April of 1997, Death Row claimed that Tupac occurred more than $7 million in debt and sought to recoup the funds from Tupac's estate. Two weeks later, Afeni Shakur filed a lawsuit against Death Row Records and Suge Knight, claiming that the label defrauded her son out of millions of dollars. The complaint was one of the many in an ongoing legal battle between Tupac's estate and Death Row Records. It began a month after Pac's murder when Afeni threatened to sue Death Row Records and stop the release of her son's posthumous Machiavelli to Don Kaluminati album. The outcome was an agreement between Tupac's estate and Death Row Records distributor Interscope Records providing the estate with $5 million in advances. The label also helped negotiate a deal to increase the slain rapper's royalty rates from 12% to 18% for past releases, a deal that Death Row adamantly disagreed with. Representatives for Suge Knight's label were not present for the meeting. Richard Fishbein told Los Angeles Times, it was Jimmy Iovine who took the lead in getting the ball rolling to straighten this mess out. Nothing would have happened if it wasn't for him. 
Death Row never even came to the table to have a discussion. At the time of the meeting, Death Row Records CEO Suge Knight was serving nine years in prison for a probation violation and was barred from performing duties on behalf of the company. The label's lawyer, David Kenner, was also absent. Kenner was also named a defendant in a Phoenix 1997 lawsuit against Death Row, seeking $17 million for unpaid royalty for Tupac's All Eyes On Me album. The 46-page complaint also sought to dissolve the unconventional contract between Death Row and Tupac. It accuses attorney David Kenner of conflict of interest and legal malpractice, being that he was the rapper's only representation as he signed a deal from behind the bars as he was also Death Row's attorney. The lawsuit also sought to have over 150 unreleased Tupac songs declared property of his estate and not Death Row Records. The two parties would ultimately reach a settlement agreeing that Tupac's estate would own the master recordings and audiovisual works from his time at Death Row Records. The estate also agreed to accept a royalty payment from Death Row within 60 days of the 10-year anniversary of the agreement for past and future unreleased Tupac recordings. To carry on her son's estate, Afini created the Tupac Amaru Shakur Foundation which provides training and support for students who aspire to enhance their creative talents. The foundation is a main beneficiary of the estate. Ms. Shakur also started the Amaru Entertainment record label to maintain the release of Tupac's previous unreleased work. The label was given the rights to release recordings made during his time at both Interscope and Death Row Records, as well as the rights to re-release the album's Tupacalypse Now, strictly for my niggas, Thug Life, Volume 1, and Me Against the World. Eleven posthumous Tupac albums have been released under Amaru as well as the acclaimed documentary Tupac Resurrection. Tupac's earnings have skyrocketed since his death in 1996. Now in 2011, his estate reportedly took in an estimated $3.5 million. When Afini Shakur passed away in 2016, she was worth at least $50 million. Back in 2015, when Pac signed the infamous death row record contract for prison, his girlfriend at the time, Desiree Smith, recalls being present and even signing as a witness of the agreement. In an interview with The Art of Dialogue, she revealed his reaction when Suge Knight and David Kenner left the room. He was excited, but he did make this comment where he was like, I just signed my soul to the devil. Everything that he did was to make sure that he put his mother and his family in a good position for life so that they would be well. He was going to do whatever it took. Sources close to the Shakur family told Los Angeles Times in 1996 that even Shakur had recorded additional albums under the type of contract he was in. He would likely have remained in debt for years to come. Tupac's financial and legal drama continues even as of late of 2022, with his sister Setua suing Tom Wiley, who became trustee of Tupac's estate after Feeney's passing, accusing him of embezzling millions of dollars and hoarding Tupac's personal items for profit. Although the Shakur family seems to come out of these financial disputes on top, they would have likely been avoided had Tupac left a will before his passing.